Let's go. By the way, do me a favor, turn on your camera if you're in an environment that's conducive to that. If you're going to the bathroom, please leave it off. <laughs> please, just engage with me. I know if I can see you, then you're going to engage at a much deeper level. And we've got a lot of great information to share with you guys today. And I'm so fired up. Gang, I have a great deal of respect for your investment of time, and I don't take it lightly. So today, what we're going to, we're going to talk through, you know, how to get online recommendations, how to get those reviews that are going to position you as a thought leader in the industry to the average prospect out there. We're going to show you how to create a Facebook group and how to communicate with that for free every single day. And so I'm very excited that we've got a very special guest today. His name is Will Penny. He's the founder of Social Orchard. And let me tell you a little bit about this guy. He's been in the industry for 36 years. So he's been doing it three years longer than I have. All right. Now, five years in a row, he would gross between 100 to 1.5 million. And he's done that consistently, you guys. And he's done it through the methods and methodology that he's going to share with you today. Sold over 3,000 homes. Yeah, he's going to talk about a, a little program at the end that you might choose to engage in if, if you choose to. And there, there's no judgment. I just want to give you a heads up that there is going to be maybe a, a call to action that'll cost you under $100 a month, yet it's going to help you build your social media presence. It's going to help you build your sphere of influence. And it's going to bring you a heck of a lot more deals. Now, those of you who showed up on time, as you well know, I gave you the opportunity to engage in a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me for free for 30 minutes. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to post my scheduling link to the chat. All you have to do is just simply click that link, identify a time that works well for you, and we'll jump on a free one-on-one -on -one coaching call for 30 minutes. Now, here's my intention. I want to share with you the methodology that's brought me to where I'm at, that's brought several other people to where they're at, and then it's up to you to implement and, apply, and deploy that. Yet, I, I just want to add value to this audience. I want to add value to this group. I want to get to know each and every one of you. I want to formulate a community. Now, also during this webinar, we're going to give you an opportunity to engage in a weekly mastermind session, a group call that I do on Friday for agent attraction. So you can maybe learn how to attract agents if that's what you want to do. Yet, uh, without any further delay, uh, I think that's enough posturing, right? Uh, I want to introduce Will Penny, again, the founder of Social Orchard. And yeah, he's just a rock star, guys. And I can't wait to hear what Will has to say today. Take it away, Will. Thanks for having me on here, Sean. I really appreciate having you on this forum. And you've been a coach for so long, and I have a lot of respect for you. And so today, uh, again, Sean said my background, but I still sell houses. Last year, I sold 111 homes with my small team of three. Um, I'm more active in the listing side of things now. I don't really work a lot with my with buyers. And I, 2010, I got licensed in 1988 when I was 19 years old. And I went to a Joe Stump seminar. Sean, have you heard of Joe Stump? Yes, of course. Yeah, I, I've been to several of his seminars, yes. So I went to a seminar in 1997 by Referral University. And I went there in Cincinnati, Ohio with my wife. And uh, basically, he, I was 28 at the time. And I was selling about 60 to 70 homes a year back then. Keep in mind, we didn't have the internet. So you had to present every offer. That's a whole other conversation. But it took a lot more time. Thank God for DocuSign and Dotloop. Be, don't complain about it. You can sell a lot more homes with it than without it. So anyway, I went to this, I went to this seminar. It was three days. And what I came away with was that our, our relationships are the currency of our business. So from that point forward, I would have every client of mine write a recommendation letter and I would put it in a Mylar folder in a three ring binder. And that was pretty much my business credit report. All right. Well, in 2010, I uh, got a call from Elizabeth Arnold, who was a sales rep at Zillow. And she wanted me to buy a zip code. And it was like 300 bucks a month. And I said, I had no interest in buying leads. And she basically uh, talked me into it. But she said, before you buy any leads, you need to make sure that you've got rev reviews. So Zillow was allowing agents to get client reviews back then. They were the first one to do it. Google had reviews, but really no agents on there. So I saw the top guy in my market and he had 60 reviews and I just started chasing him. And luckily I did because I ended up by 2019, I had 557 reviews on Zillow and my best year was 42 transactions from my Zillow reviews. Teen or no, actually 2021. I started getting nervous about Zillow because they had this flex program. And I, I thought that at some point they were going to get rid of, their, rid of their agent finder 
because reviews are so important. And I'm, I've got 557 of them on Google or on Zillow rather. So I thought at some point they're going to get rid of the agent finder. And if they do that, I'm going to lose all of my social proof online. So we, I had my nephew copy all my reviews into an HTML file from, from Zillow. And I stopped getting Zillow reviews. And I started getting Google reviews because you can get a Google business profile for free. The one thing I'd like everybody to look up is Google local service agent. So if you, if you put in uh, Google local agent or Google local service, it, there's a site you can sign up, you can get verified, it's free. If you choose, you can get a budget. But basically, if someone searches for an agent on Google, Google's still the number one search engine. I think YouTube's number two. And basically, there's just as many people. If you think about that, everyone tells us, get personal referrals, get personal referrals. In this day and age, there's just as many people that are going to go online. And because of uh, eBay is who started it, and then Amazon, people believe in the validation of reviews for a product as small as a bag of coffee online. So when they're looking for a real estate agent, we've been trained because of Yelp and eBay and Amazon. Everybody's looking at reviews and it doesn't matter their age, old people, young people, it really doesn't matter. So I started building my Google reviews and now I get at least uh, two listings a month just from my Google reviews, not anything else. So the two things that I focus on to get business is my Google profile, and we're going to get in, I'll show you what it looks like and some tips on what you can do to make it successful. And then we also have a Facebook group so that we can stay in touch with our sphere. We've got about a thousand, almost a thousand past clients in there and we stay in touch with them. That's the social orchard business that Sean was telling you about. We help agents duplicate what we've done. So that's pretty much what we did and how, where we've ended up. Now I'm getting for free 20 to 30, probably 30, uh, realistically, listings a year. This week, I've had three listing inquiries just from Google just this week. So I'll stop there. Do you have and see if we've got any questions for you, Sean, or from you, Sean? Oh, you're, you're muted. You're muted. I so apologize. That is just a rookie move right there, man. We all mess up, don't we? <laughs> Yet, uh, do you guys have any questions for Will? I want to open it to the audience. I want this to be a true forum to where you can ask the questions without any judgment whatsoever. One question I do have for you, that, that you said Google local service agent. This is something I've never heard before. So basically, if you go on, can I share my screen? I believe you have permission. Rob, does he? It's Rob's account. Rob, by the way, Rob Daniel, the CEO of Icon Coaching is just doing an amazing job and, and really That's promoting some information that we can share with all of you guys free of charge. So keep plugging in with, if you see Rob Daniel come up on your email, open it. He okay? does have, <laughs> yeah, you do have, but your, your co-host. I don't see share screen. Should be in the lower tray and yeah, it's a little green icon. Oh, there we go. It's there now. All right. So let's, I'm going to share that. Got a lot of tabs open. All right. So let's go to Google. Well, as you're getting organized here, well, Cheryl had her hand up. Cheryl, what questions do you have? And Cheryl, you're muted as well. It happens to the best of us, Cheryl, I'm telling you. <laughs> Go down to the lower tray and, and the lower left, you're going to see a little mute button. Go ahead and click that and it'll unmute you. There you go. Or maybe you're on a mobile device. If so, it's a little bit more complicated and I can't remember exactly how to do that. So, all right, we'll come back to you, Cheryl. Sounds good. All right, Will, you ready? Ask to unmute here. I'm no, sorry. Now she's okay. Can you hear me oh, there now? you go. Yep. Okay. Yeah. It was messing with me. That's never happened before. Sorry. You had mentioned that you copied your um, Zillow reviews and you put them in an HTML file. What did you do with those after? I just saved them in case I ever needed them. I didn't because can you, I mean, you can't put them on Google. So I was no, just, but you can create uh, you could put them on a web page on your website. You could, yeah. you know, you can copy and paste those later somewhere. I just saved them. Zillow has not, I don't work for Zillow. I tend to be cynical because I don't want anyone else. The reason we're all in real estate is so we don't have to have jobs and I don't want to be governed by somebody else. So I built, you know, for 10 years, I built 557 reviews on Zillow, which is like in the top 10 in the country. I've taught yeah, classes on it. That's why we're here too. Yeah. 
So I'm what trying to figure out what to do. I have a bunch of them on there as well, but not enough on Google. So I was wondering if you were able to somehow. You can't yeah. move them over to Google. Yeah. Okay. That you can't do. You just have, what I did is I reached out to the people that had given me Zillow reviews, copied their review, and then called them and said, hey, if I send you my link and I copy the review, would you post that on Google? And it'll take you 30 seconds. That's what I did. Thank you. Okay. So if you put top realtors near me on Google, you'll notice that up here, it says Google screened. So Google allows you to send in your insurance. They do a background check on you. Basically, it gives, it gives a nice warm fuzzy to consumers that you're a checked out real estate agent. Okay. So Google right here, it says sponsored. That's because I'm a Google local service agent. Now you can find me organically, but of, I just put in top realtors near me and I came up fourth one down. I've got 280 reviews um, and that's pretty much it. And I get from this, uh, this week I've had three listing inquiries just from this. And it costs me, I have a budget, but I never spend the, it costs about $30 an inquiry in my market, 30 to 40. That's all. And I get some, I had somebody call me yesterday. It was a sales call. I, whatever. I don't care about that. It's such a small amount of money. You're going to get some of that. And then what I did is I ran my Google calls because you have to answer your phone. If, if Google's, if you get a Google call through here and you don't answer your phone, you're going to get dropped off the list. So you have to get reviews, you have to respond to the reviews, you need to add photos, and more importantly, you need to answer the calls. And what I did, there's a service called Grasshopper. It's like, I don't even know how much it is, but it's a small amount of money. And I put in my phone, the Google phone, and I have, I got a Grasshopper phone number, made that my main phone number on Google. So when it rings, it says Grasshopper. So then I know it's a Google call. Because otherwise it's going to be a lot like an 803 number and you're not going to answer it. Realtors are that we can do a whole webinar on why you should answer your darn phone. You know, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you know, I mean that, <laughs> I mean, 300,000 of the million dollars we generate a year is probably just from me answering my phone. I answer personally, all of these Google calls. I don't have anybody else doing it. I don't have an ISA doing it. You got to spend your week doing something productive other than scrolling on social media. So you might as well have, you know, I just have these calls dedicated to me. So I answer them because I don't trust that someone else is going to answer the phone call late at night. I get a Google call at 10 o'clock at night. I'm answering it. But do you here. get a lot of spam call? I get a few spam calls, but Google lets you, Google lets you dispute the calls. Like if it's a true spam call, you can or a robo call or a sales call, you're allowed to dispute them. But again, to me, it's worth it because I, I've had three listing inquiries this week. I've got four pending sales right now that are all from Google. There are just as many people looking online for a real estate agent. And here's the other thing that everyone really needs to think about. There's companies called, there's Upnest, Effective Agent, Fast Expert, Yelp, of course, all of these companies, and then of course you've Op City, these companies are spending hundreds of millions of dollars to change the way that people find a real estate agent. Okay. They and they're outspending us. None of us on this call can afford to outspend fast expert. Or, and I'm sure you've all heard of Effective Agent or Upnest. And of course you've heard of Yelp. These companies charge referral fees. Yelp charges an upfront fee, but these other companies charge a 25 to 30% referral fee. Then there's Redfin. You know, Redfin charges 30 to 40% referral fees. They are spending millions and millions of dollars so that they are the hub to get the phone calls. So if you don't have a way to get your arms around your relationships, and if you arrogantly think that they're just going to remember, I mean, the average, I don't mean to get in the weeds, but the average time spent on a phone right now is about seven hours and three minutes a day. And that is not talking productively on a phone. That's scrolling through social media. And I don't even have TikTok or Snapchat, but you know, Instagram probably kills two to three hours of my day, if I want to be honest and admit. It's a giant, gigantic waste of time. The only reason that I'm successful is because there's a few things that I do religiously that I don't allow to get in, I don't allow anything else to get in the way. Prospecting, staying in touch with my past clients, this kind of stuff. Once you build a Google profile and you continuously get reviews, it's going to work for you. 
I'll stop there because I don't want to just dominate. Take a look at the chat. There's a couple of questions there. And I see Karen. I'm glad to see you. How are you doing? I see that you had your hand up and that you had a question. So I'll let you. Uh, all right, let's go yeah. through these. Nice to see you, Sean. Well, great information. I myself am getting a couple calls a week from Google Local Services. So it's working well here. So I can say that, yes, it is a fantastic platform. Two questions. When you say you're adding photos, where are you adding your photos in the, I'm assuming in the reviews? You can, you can go into your Google survey. Let's see. Let's see what this does. I'll go back. And then my other question is, what's your best practice to get people to do the reviews? Because I find that I'm chasing people a lot. I find my best way is to put it in a text with the link directly in the text. Do you find best practice on when to ask for them and how to ask for them? I'm going to go through that next because that's really important. And by the way, if you're slot, I'm talking to everybody. If you're sloppy, if you don't answer your phone, if you only text, if you, if people are, if your clients are asking you a bunch of questions, that should be a giant red flag that you're not setting expectations and explaining properly up front. The more questions your clients are asking you, when's the appraisal? How much does this cost? When should we do this? Any, any feedback from the home inspection? All of those calls are basically saying you're not doing good enough. If you're going to ask for reviews, because if, if you're, you're setting yourself up at the beginning. So I mentioned reviews at the very beginning. I tell people, listen, you can interview whoever you want. I've got a lot of experience, but my credit report, my protection in my business is my online presence, the social proof. And so at any time, if I tell you some, if I, if I'm telling you everything now and it turns out to be garbage, then you're going to have an opportunity at the end to give me a scathing review. Oh, I'll never do that. I say, you say that now, but if I turn into a monster, you know, then you, 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 I'm telling you now, you'll have the opportunity to give me a one-star review and tell everybody why, you know, or how I made your life miserable or how I was just a silver tongued devil and I fell apart. Right. So I tell everybody that ahead of time. And I say, at the end of this relationship, I'm going to ask you to give me a five-star review on Google, but I tell them at the very beginning. Okay. So I set it up at the very beginning, Karen, that, so they know, and they, they, I think they feel comfortable because I'm bringing it up and I'm letting them know I'm going to do everything I possibly can. I can, I can do most of my job like everybody else can here does here in our sleep. Um, but I was trying to log into my Google or anyway, you can log into your Google's, you can sign in here once you have an account and you can add photos and stuff there because your organic one doesn't connect with this. It doesn't seem. So you're adding them on your profile for your Google yeah. local service. Yeah. And it's a pain in the butt, but I do it. It has nothing to do with your, your Google business page, adding photos there. The two's don't, the two don't jive. I've got a ton. Like it's very easy for me to go in on my phone and add photos to my Google profile, pictures of clients, client events, but that does not, the Google local service one seems to be different. Okay. So I have to go into the, I'm 55 years old and I'm pretty technologically advanced, but I'm sure there's an easier way that I just haven't learned yet. So I'm doing, I go on to the website and I do it there. But the problem with that is I don't have the phone, the photos on my computer. It So I have to go through these extra steps. The most important is we're, getting the reviews, responding to the reviews and answering your phone. Right, Karen? Yeah, hundred percent. So I, I do do that and I don't want to, you know, dominate this here. Just one more question. I do put that out there that yes, I need a review from you and all those things. Cause a lot of people, this is how they found me, but are you finding a best practice on when to ask and how to ask? Like 90% of the time people are responding this way at this time in the transaction. I usually ask just before the closing, like just before the closing, because I'm, so I wrote down some notes here, setting expectations, having checklists, letting people, what is like the, the milestones in a transaction, such as the offer, how you're going to handle offers, why you price the way you do, what are the expenses, all of that stuff I do well in advance so that they have no questions around it. And I tell people, there's never going to be any arguments around money or dates. You're going to know exactly where you're going, when you're going, when you have to be out, when you have to respond by, how much money you're going to net, 
because I'm, I said, I'm not going to work my tail off to make you happy. And then because you make $3,000 less, because I forgot to tell you about your property taxes, you're going to hate me. So I'm very, when I started focusing on reviews, it's kind of like police with uh, body cams, you know, police with body cams. If you talk to police, most of the, all the good police, they like body cams because it keeps everybody honest. Well, I like telling people about reviews because it makes me keep my tools sharp and I don't take anything for granted. Does that make sense? So setting expectations, making sure that you answer your phone, it sounds dumb. I mean, it just sounds so like basic, but that's the key. And so I, I tell people at the beginning, I'm gonna say, as we get closer to the end, I'm gonna ask you for a review. Hopefully you'll be cool with that. Yeah, of course. Well, once you get to the closing and they're moving, they're not gonna do it. Not because they don't want to, but because human beings, aren't good at that kind of stuff. It goes back to here, regardless of the amount of knowledge that we have on YouTube and Google, we're all broke, fat, and divorced. Those three things, those needles have not moved since YouTube and Google has started because it does, information isn't the key. We just don't, we get, to, we get scattered easily as humans, we, and realtors, and, but humans in general. So I just try to set as we go through it, as we get close to the end, I say, hey, do you mind if I send you that link? We're almost here. You're gonna, we're closing in three days. Could I send you a link to give me a review on Google? And then I send it to them, but I always ask for it on the phone. I don't text, but that's just me because I want them to feel committed. Have you ever found that a buyer has or a seller has put in a Google review, but it didn't show up? It's, it's, it's a thorn in my side. Yeah, it happens. I've and, had people say, they'll say, oh, I gave you a review. And then they'll send me a screenshot of it. Yes. And it's not showing up on my thing. It's one of those, I think that's, just, it goes into some black hole somewhere. And the problem is you can't <laughs> talk to a human. You can't, you cannot talk to a human really. And it's embarrassing because then you have to send it a couple more times and it still doesn't show up. So you give up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. My wife has a home staging business and she was also, she's also been a real estate broker for since 2000 or 1999. And she gets reviews on Google. She stopped asking for reviews because of what you just mentioned. Yeah, She's like, I just don't have the stomach to keep asking people. Could you right. please give me a review? So she just stopped asking for them. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. But I don't uh, think I still have 280 on there, you know, so most of them go through. I will. I have a question. Hence, let's, uh, let's go to you, Hanson, and then Emily, we're going to come over to you. Thanks for your patience, Emily. By the way, it's great to Thank see you. you, Emily. Thank you for being here. Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what is the link, if you may, for the local service profile uh, to build that out? Oh, you just go or the on, website. Uh, you just Google how to, how to start a business profile. It's, I mean, it's very easy to do like you can just google it because it's through google so you you just now if you're asking about the link the link that you send people to give you a review or to actually start mm -hmm. the process well so for i already have a, a a profile that's you know a business profile but from what you mentioned the local service agent is a different service level right so what right? you right so let me go back here and so just what that link is right just to make sure i don't confuse the two absolutely so I just go to Google local local service ads right here. Okay, Google local so, service. Google ads. local just Google local service ads. You click on that, and it says mm -hmm. get more clients for your real estate, and then just click get started. Or you can actually talk to a human being by calling that one eight three three number. Got it. Thank you. And that's how you then you just go through the process. And you set up a profile. Super. So I appreciate that. So let, let's back up just one step. And well, I just, I want you to talk just for a second about why this is so critically important in today's world. It's important for a couple of reasons. If you, if anyone on here buys leads, like when they talk about seller leads or whatever the type of leads that you're actually paying money for, the thing that should keep you up at night is that every one of those people used a realtor for the most part to buy that house. And now somehow they didn't go back to them and you're, you're paying a referral fee 
to get them the second time round. And every time I, because I'm neurotic, I pull in the driveway on this effective agent listing and I'm like, who's, the, there's a realtor that sold them this house that didn't stay. And they think that sending out football calendars once a year and putting a flag in their yard once a year, it is no longer enough. Because again, if you look at social media and the amount of time that we spend on it and the amount, and every realtor has uh, Facebook, every, every realtor has Instagram, they, people are going to forget it. It's not like the old days. I mean, eh, my my hours spent on my phone has gone up by like two hours in the last three years, right? So, and, and that's me. So the vast majority of humans, they're scrolling, they're working from home, they're scrolling all day. All, all phones have done is make us less, less productive, not more. I mean, we have fewer hours in the day now. We say we're too busy. We're not too busy. We're just, our, our 12 hours a day has been turned into four because of all of the other distractions that we kill time with, in my opinion. That's just how, and I think if you we're mean, all honest with ourselves, we waste way more time behind the scenes uh, than we used to because of social media. So if you don't stay in touch with your people, and if you don't have a way to get, you're not going to get as many referrals from the people you sold houses to now because of what I just said. So you have to shore up the foundation by having people that don't know you, that aren't going to call a friend and say, hey, who did you use? And you get one recommendation from a friend, they will be more apt to go online and see what 50 people said. Yeah, that's exactly right. right. There's so no doubt social about that proof for some people, just what is it called? Uh, popular mechanics, right? They, people, my brother-in-law will only buy a, a lawnmower if it's highlighted in popular mechanics or the consumer guide, you know, the, there's people that only buy, like you can go on Amazon and if something's got 4,300 reviews, you'll buy it. If it's got six, you won't. And it might just be that the product's been on there for a week and not for two years. Reviews have been built, baked into our decision-making process. It's the same reason that our clients make decisions slower now because and that is because social media there's an entire psychology around this people there's a lot of people that depend on the like button and validation on social media so you go to talk to them like well we have to think about it it's because they've lost their ability to make decisions on their own without getting validation from their people out in the real world on social media now not everyone's like that a lot of people are that's why they put, I'm going to buy a new car. Should I get the white one or the red one? It's like, there was a period of time where we would just make that decision. Now we put it out. Everything's a poll, you know? Should we have broccoli tonight or Brussels sprouts? I mean, there's people that post that. Well, if you don't, don't think it ends at the choice in vegetables, it goes through their whole life, right? So th they are the type of people that go, they're not going to listen to one person who said, oh yeah, use Will or use Sean or use Karen. They're going to go on Google. And they're going to see who has the most reviews. And then they're going to call that person. And if they answer their phone, which most of them don't, most of the big teams that have lots of reviews have an ISA and it, they, they're, or they have somebody, they have a virtual assistant and they're not answering the phone. They're doing it. They're having it funneled into follow-up boss or KV core. And they're having some auto drip that doesn't work. You have to answer your phone. If they send a message, you have to respond to it quickly. That's the key. And if they get a hold of you, as long as you don't mess it up, you're going to list the house because they already feel pre-sold because you had 58 reviews. And that's important to them. Way more yeah. important than getting a call from their uncle Johnny who used you four years ago. Well, I, I would agree with you, Will. At the same time, guys, if, if you're thinking about advertising on radio, I would not do that until you've got at least 200 solid referral, uh, reviews, excuse me. Yeah. Because they're going to go on, they're going to check your reviews, they're going to read about you, they're going to do their homework before they call you. So you're wasting your money if you think you want to be on radio without at least 200 solid, solid referrals, or reviews, excuse me. Emily, over to you. Hey, Sean. Well, quick question. I've got a business, a Google business page that started with our MLS through Homes or HomeSnap. And, you know, our MLS yeah. created that. 
And that's where I only thought Google reviews were. And now you're telling me there's another place. So no, Home Snap. No. Home Snap is actually an affiliate partner of Google. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So you can, and so is uh, Tom Ferry. You'll notice that Tom Ferry, our wonderful man, but he advertises Google local services because he has an affiliate partnership. So you're paying extra money. I had a home snap Google local service profile and I, my budget was $1,000 a month. They could never tell me how much of it was just going to them and how much of it was. So I canceled it. I canceled it and I just set up my own one. And I have a I have a fifteen hundred dollar a week budget. I spend sixty dollars a week because Got it's it. it's a very honest process. So it's even though it's the same, bids. even though it's the same, I still need to sign up for local services. You don't need to, no. Oh, I don't need to, but I can send them that that. It's, orga link. it's, organic, it's organic versus organic. sponsored. Organic oh, versus sponsored. Sponsored. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'll we'll get to well, it. And by the way, guys, if there's one thing that you took away from this call so far, I hope that's it. Let's do a quick pause right now. And I want you to just raise your hand if you have any questions. Just go down to your, your lower tray there. Click um, that reactions tab and then click the raise hand bar if you have any questions for Will. We'll get you lined up. Stephanie does. Stephanie, take it away. Hi, Will. Thanks for Hi, Stephanie. this. Um, Okay, so I am already connected with Google Logo Services, but I didn't quite follow you when you said you have a $1,500 budget and you're only spending $60 a week because I have a $180 budget a week and I'm spending probably almost all of that. I can't speak to like every market. I just know there was a period of time that I wasn't showing up on the Google local services. And it was, it was just after I'd switched over from HomeSnap because I had a six month contract with HomeSnap paying $1,000 a month. I would advise none of you to do it because it's just a big money grab for Home. HomeSnap's wonderful and you can monitor your Google traffic, but the Google local service, pro it just seems like they're giving you a $200 budget a month and they're keeping the 800. It might not be that, but that's what it felt like to me. Go directly to Google. So. I, I fell off. I would, I'm constantly Googling top agents near me to see if I show up, right? I just do it every day just to keep an eye on it. And there was a period of time where I wasn't showing up and I called a rep and spoke to somebody overseas. And she told me, she just kept giving me generic information and said, well, are you responding to your reviews? Yes, I am. Are you answering your calls? I, yes, I am. Well, that's when I got the um, grasshopper number because I was afraid I was missing these long distance call, these out of the area calls. So now everything comes through that grasshopper line. There's probably another way to do it, but that's what I do. Then the other thing she said was, how quickly are you responding? So, oh, and then she said, how much is your budget? And it was like 500 a week. She said, raise your budget. So what I did just to see if it, because I figured, the worst thing that can happen if I raise my budget to $1,700 a week is that I'll get a ton of listing calls and then I can turn it down next week, right? I was, because you're either going to, you only get paid, you can trust Google. You're only going to pay for calls that you actually receive, right? So I raised my budget up to almost $2,000 a week to see what happened. And almost, they wait they weight you based on your budget, your all, this whole algorithm. So I just kind of played with it, jacked up my budget thinking, well, it's Google. They're not going to rip me off. They document where every dollar's going. It's all going to them. So I, I raised my budget to 1700 bucks a week. What, what is that? Like 7,000 something a month. And I figured I'll let this go for two weeks just to see if it makes a difference. I started getting, I started showing up on the list again and my budget wasn't being used. So I guess anyone here could, you could jack your budget up to a thousand dollars a week. They, they're not going to take it unless they just, they spend it down based on the calls you're actually getting. So play around with it. I mean, get crazy because what's the worst thing that can happen? You get all the listing calls. I mean, you get a, a few out of state, like, 
wholesalers and stuff, but most of the time it's somebody wanting to sell a house. Do you only have sellers on your profile or do you do buyers also? Buyers as well, but we, I've had some first, you know, who loves Google engineers. So <laughs> I've had some wonderful first time home buyer engineers with 20% down that only trust Google for the same way that my brother-in-law trusts Consumer Consumer Digest or whatever that magazine is, that, high, that Popular Mechanics, whatever it was. Good, how are you? Did that answer your, your question? It's on the phone, it sounds like. She picked All up. Right. A uh, let's move on to Devora. I will. Thank you for explaining all of this to me. You're I was welcome. not aware of the local ads part in Google, but I have a, Google, a, a couple of questions. The first one is, he just made me forget just like that. Google, Did he say Google Gaga? <laughs> I love it. He's Google. paying attention. It yeah, right, or right. She, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, but uh, yeah. Boy. Was, it's a boy. Um, the, come on now, stop. The, fir the first one was, is there a platform that will pull or uh, some type of system where you could use uh, fitness? To get reviews? Yeah, to get reviews. Sorry. Yeah, you. there are, but you're going to pay money. It, they're profit centers. Right, right. We we outsource everything that we can do ourselves, and right. there's a lot of pla like places like that. But how hard it, we're not selling. If I guess if anyone on here is selling 250 homes a year, you know I sell about 120, and I'm able to manage this. It's not that hard. Taking two or three calls a week from Google, they're like my most important calls. I mean, <laughs> you know, so. Sending out a review link, you just go to your, I, I, say, I have an iPhone, I save my review link on my notes, and it has a little email that or text that I copied, and I call them up, and I say, hey, do you mind if I send you that review link? And they're like, no, I say, I'll text it over <coughs> now, and I text it, and, and I say, just, if you could take, I know you're busy, but if you could take 45 seconds, just type something in for me, I'd really appreciate it, and they do it, because I've, I'm mentioning it throughout the process and we're exceeding their expectations. That's the key right. for agents that aren't willing to exceed expectations. Don't ask for reviews. Right. And that makes sense too. And I know Sean had mentioned earlier, don't do a radio ad unless you have at least 200 reviews. Do you need a certain, amount, come on, stop. Do you need a number of reviews for the Google ads? Should no. you have a number of reviews there first? Well, you want to you you can set up you can set up the Google profile through GL, GLA for free. You don't have to have a budget, okay? But the next step once you set it up is to get a budget, get a low budget or a high budget. The, again, the budget, like I saw who who was it? Karen said she's got a two thousand dollar a week budget and doesn't spend anywhere near that. You're if you put a $2,000 a week budget on Google and you get six listings, you'll be happy to pay that credit card bill, right? Yeah. So, you see what I mean? So Google's one of the one things, or, or one of the things that we can actually agree to ahead of time where they're not gonna rip you off. You know, it's not like one of these lead service companies that all, blow, they all suck. And you, you agree to pay a grand a month and six months later, you got nothing from it and your business didn't change. You know, you'd be better off taking that money and hiring uh, Sean because he's a professional coach and you're going to get way more value than trying to throw money at an ad service that isn't going to change your life just because we're too lazy to prospect. Nice plug, Will. Nice plug. <laughs> well, I mean, it's true. I've... <laughs> I've had the same business coach for 16 years and I would not be here today if it wasn't for him. So I think everyone should have a really good coach and especially this guy. I mean, he started a coaching program for the largest, you know, one of the largest real estate companies in the world and it's still in existence. So he can be trusted just like Google. Thank you for the plug, Will. I didn't pay him for that, guys. So I just wanted to let you know. He yeah, just venmo me 50 <laughs> bucks. What's that all about? <laughs> Uh, Scott, you've been really patient, buddy. So thank you. Take it away. Hey, glad you're here. Well, nine years in this business and somebody told me other, the other day, you know, 
you don't even know how to hire a cashier. So <laughs> yeah. And and I, I get that, but I don't get it. You know, all my funds are, are raising kids right now. But so I, I, I'm working on a, on a broke basis. And I like what you said about the budget. You can put the budget in there, whatever way you want. What do you know about this new voice Google, voice activated Alexa and all that stuff? Have you used that? I know nothing about it. I don't look at shiny objects. Uh, if, if, they, if I figure out what I way, thought. Yeah, I mean, right now, if my phone, if it says grasshopper, yeah. I'm like, hey guys, can you hang on one second? I mean, that's, that's what's gonna, you know, you know it, I answer my phone a lot and I, I, I prospected and called for sale by owners that cost me nothing for years. And in 2009, when the marketing fell, market fell apart and I've, and I, for the first time I was 40 and for the first time since I was 25, I didn't make a minimum of 150 or 200,000 a year. And I, I made $84,000 and had two kids in private schools in 2009. And I just called for sale by owners every day till I got an appointment, called expireds every day till I got an appointment. 2010, same housing crash. My accountant, John Margita called me and he goes, you know how much you made? He goes, you made more than me as a CP. I My taxable income in 2010 in Akron, Ohio was $304,000. And after expenses, and I'm not saying that to boast, it's because I was, I took five hours a day, told my wife to get the kids away from me. This is during the housing crash when Countrywide's going under and uh, Washington Mutual went under and all of these other companies were going under and my head was swimming and I was waking up every night wanting to throw up because I had two kids in private schools and I just prospected four to five days a week cost me no dollars. And in, in one year, I made twice that I'd ever made ever selling homes. And I think Sean would agree with me on this. I mean, that's what it all boils down to. This right here with reviews, it's a way to leverage your business on the internet, on a platform that everyone uses so that you start. And once it's built, as long as you nurture it, you're going to continue getting business from people you don't know that actually trust you. And you won't lose your business to Upnest and Fast Expert and Effective Agent because that's a whole other thing. That leads me to you should be staying in touch with your people. Right, right. Thanks. Well said, well. well said, no doubt. So guys here at, at Icon Coaching, that's our specialties. We, we help you apply the leverage, which is why I invited Will today to this webinar. Now, there are four categories of leverage, right? It's models, systems, technology, and people. And today we're talking about the technology aspect, how to just be louder than anybody else out there, such that you're showing up one, two, three, or four on the Google search engine. Now, I, I love Google because, and, and this is why I really was attracted to Will, is because if I'm a, a home seller, a home buyer, and I don't have a real estate agent relationship, or if I haven't received a referral from somebody, I don't think I'm going to go to Instagram and and find a realtor. I, right. I trust right. that makes sense. I'm not going to go to Facebook and find a realtor. No, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to do a home search, or I'm going to I'm going to search for a realtor in my local market area and the zip code, right? And so I, I love what Will is doing with this, and I love the technology aspect of leverage that he's bringing to the table for us today. So we're going to shift gears. Let's go over to Stephanie. Yes, I just wanted. It seems like that we are we're talking a lot about why we need to get the five five star reviews, but how to how how to <laughs> how do we get the five star reviews? Well, I'll give you just direct feedback and input. As well said, after the closing, they're you know eyeballs deep in boxes. They're <laughs> struggling with putting pictures up and hanging window coverings and you know, dealing with hiring a new landscaper and changing utilities and doing all this crazy stuff. So getting them to do it after the close is going to be really challenging. So if you're in a state where it's traditional that you attend your closings with your clients, and most of you are, I would encourage you to just do it right there at the table. From your phone. Just do it right from, the, yeah, at the table, right from your phone, or show and learn how to do it yourself first, and then direct them on how to do it right there at the closing table before they get knee deep, knee, knee deep in boxes. You guys with me on this? 
or the final walkthrough, Sean. If, we don't have roundtable closings here. We have escrow, yeah. but most of us do final walkthroughs, I would assume, to make sure the house is still standing. And yeah. at that time where you're, the house is vacant, you, you're closing in two days, while you're there with them, say, hey, can I see your phone for a sec? We talked about that review. Can I pull up my profile and just have you give me a quick review? It'll take 30 seconds while we're here. It means a lot to me. They're going to do it then because they're excited and you're in front of them. What are they going to do? Say, yeah, we're really happy, but hell no, we're not doing that. They're not going <laughs> to do it. They're not. They're going to give you the review right there. That's yeah, a great it's kind of like a sidebar comment too, Will and uh, Stephanie. You know, at the closing table, I'd encourage you to have an evaluation survey. Give it to your closer, have them put it in the pile of papers that they sign and ask them to complete the evaluation of your services. So scale of one to 10, how would you rate it? What could we have done to make it a 12 on a scale from zero to 10 or one to 10? And by the way, I would also encourage you to put in some categories. And I know I'm going way off you know, the, the reservation here. Yet I, I would encourage you to identify, just go to Google and search hobbies, okay? Hobbies for Americans. And it's going to bring back a list of the top 100 hobbies. And then just narrow it down to maybe your top 15 based on your geograph geographic territory. And then what we had on our survey was all of these different hobbies that people can engage in, things like gardening, wine tasting, snow skiing, water skiing, you know, bowling, and a, a football, whether it's college or NFL, whatever it is. But whatever they select as their hobby, when you, when you get back to your office with your evaluation form, then you can tag them with these various different hobbies. So if somebody is into gardening, you have a gardening tab within your CRM. And then once per month, you or your assistant is going to go out and find a very interesting article about gardening. And they're going to take everybody in the CRM Fantastic. who's tagged with gardening, and they're going to blast out an email just saying, hey, I, I came across this article. I know you love gardening, and I thought of you. If there's anything I can do for you, especially associated with real estate, please pick up the phone and give me a call. I, what Will's talking about is how to stay present, how to stay uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, on top of mind. How to stay top of mind, relevant. yes, but more more important, how do you stay relevant? And that's mind. what I was looking for, right? How do you stay relevant? So, well, we're going to shift gears, if that's okay with you. I want you to talk a little bit about what you're doing with your Facebook groups and how you're growing that and how are you communicating with them for free every single day. So, I appreciate that. So, let me share my screen again. Okay. Does everybody Emily see this Jimmy Facebook? Right here? over to you guys. So please be patient. I just want, I want to make sure that this gets out before the end of the webinar. So four years ago, I, in my pursuit of getting everyone who knows me and everyone who doesn't know me to use us as a realtor, 2019, we sold 256 homes in Akron, Ohio, about $50 million worth of real estate with this group here. Plus we had two others. I've shrunk the size of my team since then. This is my moving truck. Anyway, if I have a, if you see my eye twitch, it's because my team's all women. I'm the only dude. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've been married 31 years. All right. So what we did in 2000, I was, somebody called me after a podcast I was on at the end of 2019, right before COVID blew our lives up. And he mentioned, Hey, I got a great idea. I know you get a lot of reviews, but I started a Facebook group to stay in touch with my people. As he said it, I'm embarrassed to say this. I couldn't wait to get off the phone with him so I could set up a Facebook group. It hit me so hard because I was, I'm, like, I'm on lab coats. I'm on real closers. I mean, there's all these Facebook groups with, for realtors that we're on. And I started doing some research. Facebook only has three products. They've got personal pages, business pages, and groups. Facebook, they, the only time Facebook is ever advertised on television is in 2020 and 21, when they were promoting their groups, when people couldn't see each other, they said, join a Facebook group and get reconnected. Facebook encourages groups. So you'll see 900 people here, 991. Every one of these people are my past clients and people we know. So we use our private Facebook group because unlike business pages that have about a 2% reach, you cannot get anywhere with a business page. If you notice, you'll get one like, two likes. Likes don't pay house payments. Uh, or on your personal page, you it's about a 10%, 6 to 10% reach. 
You might have 3,000 Facebook friends, but you only ever see 50 of them. That's because of the algorithms that don't want people to get overwhelmed. Facebook doesn't want people to get overwhelmed and get off Facebook. So they're only going to show you posts from people that they determine that you have a real relationship with. With the group, they assume that if you can start a group, which is a common interest group, and you can get people in there and you can post content that they that brings them back to Facebook, then they will allow like up to 100% uh, reach in your group. So we now have, I use this like a CRM. When we get a listing or a buyer, we say, are you on Facebook? Yes. Great. Let me invite you into our, into our friends and family group. And then every day um, we... Like here's one yesterday, or this was six days ago, 2000, not my favorite style, but I appreciate it. How do you feel about English? Blah, blah, blah. We had 209 posts reach. So tw on this particular post, which is a boring one, 20% of the people saw it. We had 16 comments. Okay. So as you go through these, like this one, 286 com posts reach, 24 comments. So our, our reach is up to 50% of the group and we post five days a week. So if you think about anything else you're doing, Facebook is still the number one social platform, period. It's the number one social platform. So everybody you know, adult-wise, is usually, unless they're younger, or on even, I mean, 30 and up, like 78 or 80% of adults 30 and up are active on Facebook. And about 75% are active in at least one Facebook group. Facebook uses groups to keep people on the platform because when I post something to my group like this, it shows up in your feed if you're a member of the group and you then get reminded that Penny Group, EXP, Friends and Family, is you're, you're, it's, like a, it's like a free postcard. So even if they don't respond, it reached this many people, 10% of the reach almost responded. See what I mean? So we had 12 comments. 16 comments, 13. So basically we use this, this one had 300, like a third of the group saw this post. It's pretty phenomenal, right? Um, now, guys, here's, what, here's what I want you to pay attention to, guys. Are these pictures of listings, houses for sale? No. That's, I, I think our friends on social are really fed up with us posting pictures of houses that they're not interested in. What he's doing is engaging content. And, and then, then I go in every day for five minutes and I respond to all the comments. What's everyone doing today? We're doing nothing. So don't be bashful at your, if you're not either. 450 posts reach. So 45% of the group, 29 comments. So, but keep in mind, we're just posting this Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So what, what I did, because I have a lot of friends who are realtors, and I've been very fortunate to get a lot of success out of this business just by grinding it out. And the fees are good so far. So it's been, they all add up together and it's been a good life for me and my family. But this, if you think about this, what else can you do in your real estate business where you can stay in touch with all of your friends, family, people you know, past clients, five days a week in a way that's not going to annoy them. You can't call them, text them. You can't email them every day. But this is on a platform they're already on. And they're seeing your posts and they either scroll through it if they're not interested, they get notified every time there's a post. And so what I did, because I had friends of mine, I did a, my business coach had me do a, a webinar for his coaching clients. And he's got about 40 agents making all netting over half a million dollars a year. And he asked me to do this webinar. And I said, well, I'm not, I'm not going to do it for free. This was in 2021, I think. Yeah. January, 2021. And he said, well, 300 bucks. So 14 or 15 of his clients paid $300 to sit through a one hour webinar about how to build a Facebook group. And this was not a business at that point. I just was having success staying in touch with my sphere. Again, between Google and this, this is a huge win for me and my team. So I, after this webinar, they're like, well, what about the content? How do we get that? We don't have time to make our own content. So my son and I, while well, I go down to Florida three months a year, I go to Marco Island, Florida. And we go January, February, and come back a month and go April. And so I created a business and called it Social Orchard. And I give agents my, they get a Dropbox folder once a month with my 20 posts for $89. And then Facebook, the cool thing is, they let you, like, you can come in here 
and you can say, hey, everyone, whatever. Um, and then you go down to the calendar, you can schedule it. So what they do is they take the 20 posts and then they just come in here, they schedule them out four days a week for four, four weeks, and now they let it go. And then every day they just jump in and respond to the comments. And I have about, uh, about 100 agents that, are, that have now created their own communities for free on Facebook. And the part that, we, um, that they implement with me is that I just give them the content so that they don't stop doing it. I love That's it. pretty much it. It's not rocket science, but this is the most engaging thing I've ever done in my entire business. And it's social proof because when you invite a past, uh, somebody in here, they see that you've got, and I grew this over about six months, and then we continue to add people. But even if you get to 100, if you've got 1,000 Facebook friends, you get to 100 people in here that get invited into your group, people that know, like, and trust you. As you invite other people in, one of the things is that they see that other, they see other people that know you and they start posting in the group themselves. People ask for electrician recommendations. I mean, people are using this as a community group now. These, these member requests, those are all realtors trying to get in and I don't let them in. <laughs> I love it. So anyway, all right. that's- So guys, socialorchard.com. I want you to check that out. Will and his team does an amazing job. They're going to give you all of their you know, proven best practices, um, Emily, uh, I know you're you're turning around to get up. You know, you've been really patient. Okay, let's go over to Judy real fast. And then we're coming to you, Brian. I don't mean to talk so much. I'm just trying to give you as much information as possible. Of course, and we appreciate it, no doubt. Judy Smith, take it away. All right, Brian, we're going over to you. Brian Shaw, go ahead and unmute yourself, brother. Can you hear me yeah. now? Yes, yes, sir, gotcha. Okay. Um, so my question, Will, is I have two Facebook groups that I took over from people that were overwhelmed with them. When I took them over, there were about 105,000 people between the two groups. Holy moly. I have whittled them down to about 73,000. That tells you how many scammers, things like that. Also took all the realtors out. And out of that 27,000 people, I think 26,999 were realtors. <laughs> kidding. But I mean, it was full of that. So I'm tr that, this, I, that's why I jumped on this seminar today and i'm sorry for being long-winded is i really want to focus that group what you just those two groups on what you just said now they have different names they don't have my name or real estate business in them yet would you recommend just leaving them the way they are or leaving them the way they are and adding my name the real estate and and then because this is what i want to do with them is what you're talking about is start putting content on there so people reach out to me and i've already gotten i've got uh two buyers I'm working with off of that. And I've had four leases that I've gotten off of that. And I've had it since December. So that's not a ton, but I mean, it, it's it's made it worth my time to clean it up. And I'm still cleaning them up as I, every day someone tries to put something on, they need need candy box wrappers for $78,000 an hour. And they you know, follow this like the scammer. So I'm still getting them off. So I guess what what would you recommend I do with these? What are the topics two? like? What are the the group? What are the reasons for these groups in the first place? The one group is called Moving to Houston, Texas. Oh, and the other group is Homes and Land for Sale in Montgomery and Walker County, Texas. I I don't know what Sean thinks, but personally, I would just start you posting as a okay. realtor. And then okay. I, once a month, I'll post in my group. We never post listings because if you, I'll, I'll, if you post listings, you're going to kill the group. It's like, right. it doesn't matter how big the pool is. If one kid poops in the pool, it doesn't matter what corner it's in. Everybody's leaving the pool. And if you put a listing or talk about real estate in your group, you kill the credibility. Okay. It's like, That's a, it's like yeah. the Will Smith slap. It just ends it right there. And so once a month, I'll post something like shameless plug. Don't forget we're great realtors, LOL. Something like that, maybe once a month or once every six weeks. But we give so much value by with our content. And it's all fun, benign stuff. Which garage door do you like? Which color paint do you like? What's your favorite Mexican restaurant? Where do you take your dog to play these days? Those are the kinds of posts that we, 
and we'll have four different types of architecture, four different types of swimming pools. We'll have games. Where is this? You know, we'll post a picture of some obscure place in the world and we'll say, don't cheat. Where is first person to say where this is? We give them a $10 giant eagle. That's a grocery store gift card. We have a contest once a month. We have captioned this post, you know, with an all pink bathroom or a all wood bathroom or, and we get 70 comments on stuff like that, but you don't want them to, you don't want them to be all candy, you know, because candy gets tons of dog pics, get tons of comments, baby pictures, get tons of comments. But if you post them twice a week, you kill the group. So the candy only works. You can only have the, the cheat ones, kids and babies, you know, and every, like every once in a while, because otherwise it just starts annoying people, you know? Right. And it's the three T's of marketing, right? Yeah. I learned this from a good friend of mine years ago. He said, it's the three T's of marketing. It's terriers, toddlers, and excuse me, tits. <laughs> yeah. Correct. It's so, the three T's of marketing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and if you posted a terrier picture, a toddler picture and a you know a boob photo once a week you'd have a thousand people but then you'd kill your group in th week three that's exactly that's, right you got to mix it up and i, so, I love this and, and i don't this. recommend i don't recommend posting this what the third t i mean i i don't at all no so. no definitely not it was more of a joke <laughs> no. i just wanted to kind yeah. of lighten the mood a little bit yeah right but, uh, and don't post your political beliefs oh, and by the way going not. back to what you said 25 minutes ago if people, if you do a radio ad or any kind of ad, postcard campaigns, people are going to look you up on social media. And if you are heavy on the two things that our moms told us not to talk about at parties, religion and politics, if you're heavy on social media with religion and politics and you're taking the, and you're leaning on the mountain that says, well, I just want people like me, then do not advertise to the world because you're going to kill half your audience. That's just- More than that. Yeah, more than, more that, than that. Yeah, you'll kill more than half, guys. I promise you that. See, yeah. on, on social media, you do have freedom of speech, yet you do not have freedom of consequence. No. Right? There's cause and effect in this world that plays out every single day, and we all get that. So if you guys are interested, go to socialorchard.com. Check out what Will does for $89 a month. And there's a set, there's a free trial. Content. There's a free trial as well. Well, get a month's content. A free trial. Free. Good, good. Well, check that out if you choose to. And by the way, if you want a little help growing your real estate business, you know, Rob, Dan, Daniel, and I have just locked arms to really partner with you and lock arms with you and help you increase your production day after day, week after week, month after month, quarter after quarter, year after year, decade after decade. Guys, we are here for you to support you and help you. There are several very inexpensive programs that we offer. We do recognize that the, the state of the the uh, economy right now is, is somewhat challenging. And so what we've done is we've really reduced prices on a lot of things just to really help you guys out and make sure that you're armed with the right knowledge, skills, mindset, and habits so that you're equipped to go out there and provide for yourself and your loved ones at a very high level. Those of you that were smart enough to be on time today, you had the opportunity to engage with me in a one-on-one -on -one free coaching session I'm not going to try and sell you coaching. I'm not going to try and convert you. There is no expectation on my part. I just want to give back to the community that has been so good to me. So if you if you were here, then you got the link. Schedule your free call with me directly, and we'll talk through your business. We'll talk through your models. I'll share my methodology with you. I'll give you the four-step formula. And you know, ideally, you'll be able to, to take that and just put it into action, guys. Implement and deploy it as fast as you can. Because the difference between extraordinary success and below average results, guys, it's merely speed of implementation. So schedule your call. Rob, do you want to say anything before we go? Yeah, I do, Sean. Hey, listen, everybody, we're going to be doing the, our next webinar, be watching it. We'll be putting it out to you. It's going to be in about four to six weeks. It's going to be extraordinary. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. We're going to just uh, tease you a little bit, but just make sure that you are watching and every time that we said something out, we're going to be doing this about every four to six weeks. So be looking for the next webinar. Okay. So I hope that you enjoyed this one and anything I will, Sean, thank you uh, for hosting this and, uh, you know, something that I, well, heck, I'm not even going to tell you. Uh, we had a hundred people here. We probably had 150. I had a limit on my Zoom, unfortunately, and we had to get this. 
39 people streaming live on Facebook. We put it on Facebook and they were sitting over there. So oh, cool. thank you guys for everything. We'll have all that. I'll give you some fireworks right now. Look at that. I love it. Before Rob. we hang thank up, you, <laughs> Lars, uh, before we hang up, Lars asked a really good question. How do you get reviews when you're just starting out? I did contests. So you're al Facebook allow, or excuse me, Google allows you to get people you know, right? So if you have clients, then I had a contest where I sent out the link to 10 past clients and said, hey, I'm going to give a car, free car wash, free gift card, whatever, for the first 10 people that give me a review. And then I did that for the next 10, then the next 10, then the next 10. And I just, I would have little contests around getting, having people uh, respond to the review link. And I would email it out through follow-up boss. Hey, we're looking to improve our reviews online. If you're one of the next 10 to, to send me a good, a five-star review, and I'll put a happy face, I'll send you a $10 Giant Eagle gift card. And it was well worth it to me because that's what gave me the springboard to get it started. All right. Well, thank can you I so ask, much. Uh, can I ask a question real quick about the coaching? Um, in your coaching, are you are you guys able to help assist with getting these like Facebook groups set up? And I'm my biggest thing is I'm so tech, like not techy. So when we're talking about all this, I'm like, okay, is part of and you can probably talk about that during like the coaching one but i'm just curious like is there help with that like getting all that stuff set up or do i need to go to my 21 year old <laughs> well you know i know will his his program they'll they'll help you set up your facebook group yes well oh yeah uh, all you have to do is send me i'll talk to sean but i'll send out i'll send out an email just showing you like the basics i'll get i can send you a, a link to a video on how to set a group up for free so we'll work that okay. out okay okay Awesome. Thank yep. you. And, and Sean can talk to you about it on his coaching call. If you do the coaching call, make sure you sign it up. We do have a uh, mastermind every Tuesday and it's a uh, group coaching for $47. That's it a month. And we can certainly help you with that Facebook page also. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Helps a lot. Yeah. yeah Scott, uh, Scott is in there. And uh, <laughs> so, like I said, we're, we, we will help you with that. Great. Okay. Plug, Scott. Thank, Thank you guys. Well, Got Thank you. Around. Until we talk to you next time, guys, just be on purpose, be productive, uh, be powerful. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Don't forget to thank salute you. our warriors thank today. You. It's the 80th year of D Day. So wow. Salute our warriors. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys. Take care, everyone. Talk soon. Bye bye. Thank you.